Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be an ace match. Week 13 of Sparky's cast. Sparky's versus KT Rolster. Ace match. This is going to be Lita versus Violet. And a little bit interesting player choices here. Um, uh, I'm somewhat astonished. Anyways, this is going to be Lita here in the southwest as the White Terran. Um, the Red Protoss in the northeast will be Violet. And uh, let me give you a, a quick recap of what has happened so far in this match to bring us to this ace match um in the first two games sparky's went down go go being beaten by tempest who is um undefeated this in this season now getting two wins against uh sparky's once against lita earlier on and then this match this game against go go as the first game of this set uh and the second game uh flash you know showing that he's dominant <laughs> owning hogel uh, in game two, but in games three and four, Sparky's has prevailed. Secret um, becoming a rather impressive Protoss versus Protoss player after beating Bisu earlier on in the season has now beaten Violet as well. And then Lita, that man right there, um, won game four against Hojija. Pretty, uh, well, I mean, it was a pretty close match. It was a, a long game, long Terran versus Zerg. Eventually pulled it out late game. <laughs> with just massive tanks. Anyway, so now we have Lita versus Violet, and the reason that I think that this is interesting is because, as I said just a second ago, Violet lost his match in this uh, series. So Violet coming off of a loss and playing in the ace match against Lita. Um, Lita, however, I can see why they chose to field Violet. Violet has been incredibly hot this season. I mentioned before that he's 10-2, and two, now 10-3 and three this season after his loss. Um... But uh, so he's been playing incredibly well, but also Lita has really struggled against Protosses this season. And I don't have the exact statistics out, but I know that um, I, I had written down that two of his last five, uh, sorry, two of his last seven games were um, against uh, Protosses that he lost. Um, I know there's at least one more loss earlier on, I think, in the season. So I think he is maybe 0-3, maybe 1-3. I'm not 100% positive. I'll look that up and maybe mention it in the next series or something. Um, but for now, we have Lita uh, walling himself off in his one base with his supply depot and barracks. So he's preventing the scout from Violet. So Violet uh, not being able to get any scouting information. Lita is moving his SCV over into uh, Violet's base as we speak. So he will be able to get out a full scout. And we're going to see what Lita tries to pull off with one base here. Um, interesting that he is conceding that natural expansion, at least for a little while, um, just to deny the scout. The first Marine is out and chasing away the scout of Violet. So Violet is once again being pushed out. And hopefully Lita will be able to maybe take an expansion right now. But maybe he's deciding to go for quicker tech. Um, quick tech seems to be what... Violet is after as well. He has one gateway and a cybernetic score, which is spinning right now. So, uh, Dragoon range already underway. <laughs> um, we'll see if he puts down another gateway or a tech building or an expansion next. And my phone is going off, so let me mute that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, where, what was I talking about? Lita and Violet. So Violet, yeah, I, I gotta say, this has really been a tremendous season so far for him, really um, proving himself a uh, not only an excellent player, but also probably the pivotal member of the KT Rolster team um, doing a... Uh, very nice job, and he's really one of the reasons that KT Rolster has been so dominant in this season. Like I said earlier as well, uh, KT Rolster is uh, way in the lead of this league. Um, it looks like at this moment, I'm not sure if this is included in this game or right before this game or right after this game, but KT Rolster is 16-3 and three at the statistics I'm looking at, and uh, with a plus 28 game difference. The uh, next best team is STX Soul, which is 13-7 and seven with only a plus 6 game difference, so uh, <laughs> that is pretty ridiculous. Sparky's is... Um, as, as we've all seen, is suffering pretty thoroughly this season, sitting next to last, just above uh, Air Force Ace. I mean, well, pretty far ahead of Air Force Ace. Air Force Ace always struggles, but uh, we like those guys anyways. Anyways, that was Quick Tech coming from 
uh, from from Violet. He has his robotics facility being built in sort of a sneaky little position towards the western part of his base. I don't know if that SEV scout was able to uh, spot that out. Um, meanwhile, Violet is putting on some pressure with some Dragoons and... Uh, just barely not able to get in towards that natural expansion area from Lita because of those spider mines that w that were placed. So um, critically timed vultures and spider mines. Ooh, that one spider mine comes out and kills that dragoon. That is a very nice uh, bit of luck there for Lita. Um, and at the meantime, he is going for a starport. So uh, possibly some wraiths coming here earlier on in the game in the beginning of this mid game i suppose as both players are trying to take their natural expansion but um also possibly just going for drop ships so that he can continue with these uh or continue to use these vultures in order to do a little bit of harassment um on Violet. Uh, this map, by the way, I think I mentioned it, is Match Point, um, which is surprisingly in favor, well, not surprisingly in favor, but uh, thoroughly in favor, I suppose is a better adjective, um, of, of Terran over Protoss. Um, I don't, the exact specifics uh, I'm not going to get into, but it is pretty well dominated. <laughs> um, it will, uh, just about two to one um, Terrans over Zergs. And, uh, that's two to one ratio, not two games to one game. Um, and so a starport, the starport is building right now, so that is going to be a wraith. So um, we're going to have some sort of wraith harassment coming out for Lita. He might use those wraiths um, just to focus down any uh, shuttles carrying reavers. That would be a very nice defensive move to use those wraiths, to use with those wraiths. <laughs> but um, it, it could also be going for harassment. Um, it looks like that observatory is out and the robotic support bay uh, is also being built. So... Um, there will definitely be reavers in the near future. The first wraith has been built on a control tower going down, so he might just be a single wraith to counteract any um, shuttles, um, because it does not look like he's sending that all the way over tour to get some harassment done. He could be putting that control tower down uh, to get cloaking, though, um, although there are observers already on the map for, uh, for Violet. Um, critically, that observer that's in the area has also spotted out the... Um, and the Wraith, as well as the control tower and the starport, um, and he will be able to see if that starport starts, or excuse me, the control tower starts blinking uh, to indicate that cloaking is being upgraded for that um, Wraith. So far, it looks like it is not, so uh, probably just a single Wraith and then transitioning into dropships. This is a good map to have dropships on because there is a lot of staging ground next to the... Um, next to the main and natural base that main and natural base base both have um pretty strong choke points that are fairly easy to defend um the natural expansion may be a little bit less so which is you know typical of, a, of of any good starcraft map but uh just because there's a couple of entryways a couple ramps coming into it as well as a sort of a far route um that will take you on flat ground into that natural expansion but um Still, both both bases pretty easily defendable, and if that uh, if that um, excuse me, those dropships can help bring in forces into the main base and bypass the, that choke point, it might be able to do a lot of damage. Um, meanwhile, what I missed while I was saying that is that that wraith does have a kill on it. I think it was able to snipe an observer that was in the main base, um, a quick scan, and then killing a, kill it, killed it off with the wraith. Um, the Wraith is still floating around, and that first shuttle with a likely one Reaver in it is floating around the map, but um, has not gone in for any sorts of attack so far. We're going to see if that Wraith is able to find that and pick it off. The shuttle is out, and it picked up a drop... Sh excuse me, it picked up a, um, a siege tank, but that was also seen by an observer, which sacrificed its life to get that information. The uh, the the noble spy observer is uh, sacrificing his life for the country, finding out that that dropship has a siege tank in it and is heading towards uh, Violet's base. <coughs> Violet, in reaction, has kept a lot of units around his bases. He is setting up a third base over in that three o'clock position, 
but he has Dragoons at his natural expansion and at his main base as well. Um, also putting down a cannon in his main base to help defend against any possible vultures. Vultures coming in towards the third base, getting a couple of probe kills in those that, excuse me, it was one uh, vulture and one siege tank coming in towards that natural expansion, being able to get a couple of probe kills, but uh, Violet with those Dragoons that were hanging out in the natural expansion is able to clear that out and uh, protect uh, protect most of those probes from any damage. There is still one mine. Oh, it might come in. Oh, a little bit of a splash damage on those probes, but not getting nearly the damage that it could have done. Um, it's always bad if you have um, mines around your uh, mineral lines and then you bring in units that cause that splash damage. Sometimes that splash damage can do huge amounts.